Fit like a bee, Danny Min here, and welcome back to another episode of Tray and Life. Uh, right, a few things before we head on our way. So, I did, well, I thought I did a recording uh, of me travelling from Lille, where the last episode ended, through St. Quentin and through Reims to Luxembourg. It was a nice little passenger route. This was all unexplored new track. Uh, but I hadn't even opened OBS, so nothing got recorded. Or I think I did open it, and then for some reason I closed it before I opened up Train Life. Uh, so we'll do that again. So let's jump onto the route planner. Uh, oh, I've already got it set up. Another thing that happened on this merry little journey down here, we got a bit of XP, and I got a couple of new drivers. So say hello to uh, Johannes. And who's the other one? Where's my other lady? Oh no, she's like disappeared from existence. Oh no, she's not. She's there. Uh, Agnieszka Malkowitz. Uh, so Agnieszka Malkowitz has got nothing to do. We're basically waiting until we can level unlocks, get to 23, and then we get the UIF M93P. Uh, once we get that, she will get that, and we'll set her on our merry way to do some freight somewhere. Uh, but yeah, so, we're all good there. Uh, let's go back to my employee list. Did you... Adele has leveled up. Well done, Adele. Uh, same perk points. What do you want? Max task distance? Energy, event handling speed. Right, let's get you a point in that. Uh, I'm pretty sure Jonas, Johannes, leveled up. But it says here they didn't. Did you level up? Oh, you've got, yeah, he's got one perk point. No, he doesn't. He's just level one. He's just like super bad at everything. That's okay. We give him the shiny new diesel uh, PZK Bison that we got, we are keeping the electric one for ourselves. Uh, let's go, well, let's push escape. Let's push escape again. And let's ask uh, Luxembourg, Maine for permission to board passengers. Right, it wants me to stay to the left, so we shall do that. Let's jump back into the cab. I can actually see my platform over there. Uh, so the run down from Lille to here went pretty uneventful. Uh, I thought it was going to take longer. It is a kind of a long route. Uh, but there's areas where you think you're going to have to go dead slow that you can actually stay at 120 kilometers per hour. So that's, that's pretty good. Uh, no, don't put the brake on. Take the power off first and let it coast. So we will pick up some people here and then we will head off to Lille now. I got passengers at each station uh, that all wanted to go to the other stations on the route. Uh, I'm just going to make sure it does that this time uh, because sometimes people just don't want to go to where you are heading to and if that is the case then you don't get any money and you don't get any XP. The money I am not too concerned about, it's the XP we're kind of gunning for now, so we can unlock that final train. Uh, boarding passengers, yeah, it's going fast. It is going fast. Uh, let's close the doors. Let's push M. Company, my train. No, oh, there's a few people. Yeah, so that's good. Seven hours and two minutes, that's fine. And um, these two areas are pretty close together, so I'm assuming that is gonna be all good as well. Once the doors are closed, we shall head off on our merry way. Now, I was going to say, it looks a bit foggy, but it's not. It's just because this windscreen, this windshield on a train is <laughs> super dirty. <laughs> uh, we need rain. We need rain to come in. Yeah, there you go. Once you get out of the light, the dirt and grime disappears. Marvellous. Okay, so let's head on to Reims, which is our first station. Now this is decently sort of far away, so it will take us a minute to get there. And then it's a, it's a decent minute as well to get from Reims to St. Quentin. And then once we get to St. Quentin, it's, it's just a little short hop up north uh, to get to Lille 
forgot where we were going there, but it's Lille we're going to. We're almost up to 2 million again, which is fine because we're going to be purchasing another train soon. The AI drivers are fairly cheap to hire. One uh, did cost me about 30 grand, the other one cost me about 10 because his, his skill stats were way down. But we'll level them up, we'll train them up. Johannes. Johannes was the one with the lowest skill stats, but we'll get him trained up and within no time at all he'll be a, a literal veteran of the railway. Now this very nicely bypassed me. Uh, okay, I need to stop here. Yeah, yeah, okay. See that red, that red light there should be here. Okay, so I'm staying on the right. We're waiting for this train to pass. Uh, okay. So he's going to scoot over to that side. Yeah, there should be a signal here that stops me before this. Are you stopping to let me pass? Okay. Uh, Q, head over to the right. Get rid of the handbrake and the brakes. And let's go. So he very kindly is stopping at last pass. That's super nice of him. Okay, I suppose, that, well, if the signal is at his side, then he should have to stop. So that's, that's right enough, actually. There's nothing wrong with that. And I didn't get fined for entering this block either, so that's like really nice. And now we can switch back over to the right hand side. Slight delay there, but it's okay. We should still make it in time. Uh, weirdly, Luxembourg has a 80 kilometer speed limit for everywhere, including station zones. So that's interesting. I wonder if that will change uh, as time progresses, as more and more stuff are altered and updated in the game. There we go, a few cars in the car park there. Uh, next speed limit is 120. Got it. Super happy with that. You no longer have access to Luxembourg, Maine. Well, that's okay, because I no longer need access. There's my 120. So, yeah, Luxembourg, short and sweet there. Happy with that. <laughs> and let's head out to our next stop, which is Reims. There's the plane. See the plane? Hello. <laughs> Now this area here was what surprised me because I thought like some of these uh, corners and bends and things are, are quite steep etc and I thought it was going to slow me down a bunch of times but apparently you can take all these at 120 kilometers per hour which is which is awesome. That's why this little run did not take me as long as I thought it was going to take. I did, however, meet a fair amount of AI trains. There seems to be a lot of AI trains in this section of track. Uh, obviously, we just met that first one. Uh, I think there were three AI trains on the route, and there were two broken down trains that I had to contend with uh, on the way from Lille to Luxembourg. So hopefully we'll get a decent amount of traffic on the way back. That would be nice. There we go, we'll stick it at 122, it's season the speed seems to be holding there, which is awesome, I love it when that happens. And then we can just keep an eye out for stuff, oncoming trains, Bambi on track, etc, etc. Fog lights warning, which would be bad. <laughs> also the, the little signs as well that tell you when you're approaching a crossing so that you have to use your horn. Because you will get fined for not using it at the appropriate time. So that's pretty cool. Right, we're doing 124 here. And there's a hill. So let's uh, reduce a bit of speed. Or reduce a bit of power. Gravity is taking us the rest of the way. There we go. Over the bridge. There's a really high bridge as well that you pass over here, which is pretty cool. And I never got a proper look at it on the way in. So I'm going to try and look at it from the outside view as we pass it again. Right, we're still miles away from Reims, so we should be good. 
we'll start to see the industries as we sort of pop in. Now my plan, if the if the other recording had actually worked, was to do freight for this episode. Uh, but I'm glad it didn't work because when I went to look at freight around Luxembourg, there there ain't much. <laughs> there ain't much in the way of raw goods. The only sort of industries around Luxembourg are ones where you take refined goods from other industries to them. And I was like, oh no, that's not use. I would have had to travel a fair distance along the map to find a an industry that produces raw goods. Is this the bridge? Casper Hendricks has completed the delivery of seven wagons. Good man. Never had any issues with Casper. Sophia has had many issues. Watch out, animal on the track. That's okay. I'm sure we'll be fine. We'll keep an eye out for Bambers. Uh, I am heading to the left. Now, again, this route was pretty good as well. It did not lead us astray and send us down any tracks that we didn't want to go down through any industries it was all good the route was mapped out perfectly uh, right so Bambi's 200 uh, 160 right so that's there we go sound the horn off he goes and we can speed up again what was that there was something on the iPad there and it just sort of just totally disappeared <laughs> Right, 113, why am I not doing 120? Next speed limit is apparently 50. Is it? I find that hard to believe. Could possibly be for this bend, but I don't think so. I'm pretty sure I had an issue where it was telling me that next speed limit was like 80 and 100 and 50 and etc, etc. And, and it never actually changed from 120. So I'm just going to keep it around 120. No signs of oncoming trains or anything on the radar. The sun is rising. Beautiful sunset there over the windmill. Okay, so staying on the right. That's fine. Ooh, wow, just the glare from the sun is pretty bright. I do like the lighting in this game. There's not often nowadays where you get like a sunrise or a sunset in a game and it doesn't look terrible. Most of them look pretty stunning and pretty good. The lighting effects that you can use nowadays. There's a couple of grain silos over there. Uh, where am I? What did I just pass there? Don't know. Uh, yeah, so we are approaching Reims, but we're nowhere near the main station. Ah oh, yeah, so we head south and then we have to double back north again. That's fine. I know for a fact that this horseshoe bend here, I can take at 120. This was one of the ones where I thought it said it was going to slow me down, and then it never did. See, it says 110 there, but you never really hit the 110. <laughs> 110 doesn't really come, doesn't really happen. Let's keep an eye out for oncoming trains, because we are going pretty fast, so obviously stopping distances are not the same. Right, here's the 110. Okay, and we've got a decline. Yeah, quite a substantial decline here. And it's going to come down to E because we are entering into the city limits of Reims. Right, now that we are into the city limits of Reams, we can possibly get yeah, two, whoa, one back, two, three, and two. Uh, so they are ready, and I need three. Passons boarding, thank you. So, yeah, that is quite a fair distance from Luxembourg to Reams, Main, but it's a, it's a high speed section of track where you can just gun it at like 120, so that's pretty good. There we go, there's a tower crane. So some sort of building is being built there. And now we're going right here, but then I'm going left. So right, and then left. 
Okay, duly noted. Thank you, game. Now, what is the script here? So, we're, we're bypassing the warehouse. That's fine. Don't need to go into the warehouse. Stay on the right. No signs of any oncoming trains on the radar, so we're all good. Smooth sailing. So far, so good. And we're bound to hit another train soon. Or a broken down train, probably. Because this is where I hit my second broken down train on the line. There definitely seems to be a lot less traffic thus far. Just the one train we've passed. Okay, let's jump out. Have a look. There's the warehouse. If you've seen one, you've seen them all. Office building there. Nice little sort of open park area or something. Round the bend we go, and then the station should be down here somewhere. I'm pretty sure we're well in time for delivering the people of this station. So we should be good. Company, my train. Two hours and 54 minutes to get there. Yeah, we'll be fine. We shall be fine. So the, the AI passengers in this game must be super happy because they all arrive hours, hours ahead of schedule. I'd be delighted if that happened in real life. Imagine getting on, say, a plane from London to Orlando, Florida. And have someone tell you that the journey is going to be roughly eight hours. That in five hours, you actually get there three hours ahead of schedule. That would be amazing. <laughs> I've had my fair share of long haul flights. And arrive many, many hours before the plane is supposed to get there would just be an absolute dream come true. I actually met an AI train here on the way out. And it made me go into this siding. And it, the train I'm in was just perf the perfect length to fit in there to let the other AI train pass. It was awesome. It looked really good. Right now, I'm going to slow down to 50. All right, and once I pass the dwarf signals here, woof. <laughs> just saw the arrow. So the arrow is there. I just saw that and no more before passing that set of points. That was pretty close. But we made it, we're in. A little bit of power here. Uh, we're doing 50, so let's just coast until we get in. Ample time for the passengers. I think they've definitely changed up the AI passengers that start on the platform that stay on the platform as well. It seems like there's a bit more variety. Uh, a lot of the women have uh, very short short mini skirts on <laughs> that they definitely didn't have before. Uh, v, open the doors. So open doors, depart passengers, board some more passengers. You gain 334 experience points. So, always when you do an intercity train, your very first stop will give you a tiny amount of XP. Once you hit the second, third stop, fourth stop, etc., it fairly jumps up. Like, I would expect to get, we'll get like 1800 or 2000 for the next stop or something. It's, it's crazy. And those people were delivered well ahead of schedule as well. Right, no signs of trains on the radar. The next stop is St. Quentin. Again, it's a rather winding section of track, but it's not one where you have to continuously slow down all the time. Watch out, a train is approaching. 
Okay, right, I've entered this block, so I'm just gonna coast. Uh, I need to make sure that the back of my train is not blocking the other side. No, so we can just sort of coast here. Uh, we can see him there. He is on our side of the track. But there must be a switch in between us because the game has not found me for entering this section. Oh wait, he's on the other side of the track, is he? He is. Okay, continue on. Hello, buddy. Yeah, there was a switch. The switch is just up here. Okay, so that's all good. We can continue on. Nice. So that was a an encounter with the AI that was nice. It was a nice encounter. No fines, no dodgy Mexican standoff moments. It was all good. I have noticed as well, a lot of the trains, or so at least half the trains I ran into in the field recording, they actually stopped to let us pass. Uh, prominently before, it was always us that had to stop to let them pass. But this time, half of them we had to stop and the other half they stopped for us. I don't know if something has changed. I haven't noticed any new updates or patches. Uh, but if it's a really small patch, my computer probably downloads it so fast that I don't even notice. So that's interesting. Right, another 100,000 quid and I will be back up to being a double millionaire. Awesome. Money has not really been an issue. <laughs> it always seems in games like this that ticket pricing for passengers and stuff is like really odd. Like take Transport Fever for example. A, tra a train that has like three passengers will end up at a station and give you like 30 odd thousand quid. <laughs> and it's like, whoa. So each passenger paid 10 grand for one, tra uh, one ticket to ride this train. But I think in cases like that, it's because, you know, things are so expensive. Rail maintenance road, maintenance vehicle maintenance, buying new vehicles, be able, being able to increase your bank balance to get those new vehicles, etc. But it seems like this is kind of the same. You earn like... Uh, nah, it's a bit more realistic in this, I would say. We'll check the how much we make uh, when we get to St. Quentin. We shouldn't be that far away because we're actually at part of Steel Mill. Oh, that was, a, that, was a, that was a dodgy section of track there. Anything new around here? I did look at this on the way... Down. I'll slow down a bit. 127 is a bit too fast. The steel mill is over there. This we know. One thing I have noticed. If you see industries like, for example, uh, when I did the episode, the field episode, when I got to about here, I could literally see... Uh, obviously, you can scroll down here. So there is going to be stuff here at some point. But yeah, as I was coming down here, I could see like a city or an industry. And obviously if there's industries or cities that you can see without when, out within the borders of the map, those are probably places that are going to be added later. So at some point, tracks will split off and you'll be able to go down there or something. Uh, so I did notice a few of them. So that's pretty cool. Uh, we're definitely, well, I think... They definitely are doing like the south of France. That would be cool. Alright, we're staying on the right here. Speed limit is pretty good. Next stop, St. Quentin. It shouldn't be that far away. We should head west a bit and then start heading north. And we'll be all good. Right, so this junction here. I am heading to the right. Which is fine. Is it going to require me to slow down to go through this bend, this turn, or are we going to be good? 
don't actually know. Uh, it says a hundred. Watch out, animal near the track. Yeah, so this is this wants me to slow down to a hundred. Okay, I'll let it creep down. Is this the huge bridge? Nah, I think I've lost the huge bridge. I can't even remember where the huge bridge was. <laughs> where are you, bambers? Oh, you're... Oh, wow. Magical Bambi. Floating, levitating Bambies. Floating in midair. That's pretty cool. <laughs> that deer is going places. He's going to have his own... Uh, his own show at Vegas, his own residency. He'll be replacing Ben and Teller as the main magician in Vegas. Are they still on the go, Ben and Teller? I know they had the the Bengal Tiger, the, the white one. I think they've had a few because obviously tigers don't live forever. And I'm pretty sure they don't still have it now because there are strict laws and using exotic wild animals for performances and stuff which is fair enough I totally agree animals should be running free in the wild unless they're injured or something and they're at a zoo I mean I do agree with animals being in zoo especially if it helps you know regain their sort of population if they're doing breeding programs and that some of those animals that are breeded are released back into the wild or maybe if they're injured or wounded then they do a residency at the zoo to get back to normal health and then they go back out yeah this is the this is the area where i thought it was like a like the biggest tallest bridge in the game but there's no water that runs <laughs> It's not actually that tall as you come in from that side. Uh, no, why do you want me... Oh no, I've just gone through San Quentin Farm. Okay, prepare to get fines. Let's go. Uh, lower your speed, you're speeding. Yeah, I know. Can I actually get through this fast enough without being fined? Let's find out. Uh, we also do not have permission to be here, so we've been fined 250. Okay, pretty sure I can get in and out though. These people will be thinking, why the hell is this guy here? Yeah, I literally got in one side and out the other uh, before being fined. <laughs> the only thing I got fined for was the fact that I never let them know I was coming in. So if I had radioed them really quickly and said, hey, I need station access, we wouldn't have been fined at all. There you go, top tip. You can actually run at full speed through a warehouse and get from one side to the other without being fined. Maybe I did get fined and I never noticed it. I'm pretty sure the only thing I got fined for was... Uh, no, no, not radioing them to let them know that I was coming in. Uh, where's my brake on? The brake was on at 10% there, I never even noticed that. Right, let's go E. Uh oh, where the hell is... Oh man, you're four, three, and two. One and three. Okay, St. Quentin knows that we are coming. Uh, the station is right up here. And I think I need to go to the left. Right, so slow down. Slow down. Uh, yep, I do need to go to the left. Right, take the brake off. Ah, oh, yeah, this is the one that... So this is like a bypass line where you can go flying straight past the station and you don't have to stop or anything. So we've entered the station. Ooh, sign collision. That sign needs a bit of... different placement, I think. Uh, where's my platform? Uh, it's over at the right. Okay, that's fine. We're going over there. Pretty sure we got these people here. Well within time as well. So you're saying both right and left are wrong. Okay. Oh, 
people on the ballast. <laughs> people beside track, not on platform. I think there's just enough breathing room for them to fit in between the train and the platform. That's one thing I would like to see is potentially, because that's a really far distance from the train to the platform, you'd have to do a run and jump. If it was a, like a disabled person or something, there's no way you'd be able to get your wheelchair on there. Unless they did like a, you know, like some sort of plank system. To get to the door. Uh, it just seems really far, the distance. Right, V open doors. Let's get the people offloaded at St. Quentin. Uh, pretty sure we got them there in time. In fact, I'm almost certain because uh, I'm pretty sure 11 o'clock was the time that I needed to get the passengers to Reims. So, <laughs> right, so people got off, people boarded. Let's head off to Lille again. Right, let's go. Uh, take the break off, that would be a marvellous idea. And let's jump back into the cab. Keep an eye out for any trains, because they do often spawn between uh, main stations at cities. So, one thing I've wondered, they've got all the stations are like Paris Main, St. Quentin Main. Are they going to have you know, other stations inside a city. Maybe in some of the larger cities you could do that. Or is it just gonna say Quentin Main just a way for saying, hey, this is the this is the station in this town or city. Right, let's get up to A. And it's not that far away from we're not that far away from Leo. Right, I never checked to see how much... Oh, God. Where are you? Uh, let's just coast. Right. Keep an eye out. So these are both flashing. This does not help me at all. Okay, now they're both red. To say that I can't go on the left and I can't go on the right. Okay, so stop here. You are on my side. Okay. So I think this train is on the right hand side, but I think it's going to push over to the left. And that's why it's saying that it doesn't want us to cross these signals. Uh, because we could pass it on the left, but then that train would then be stopped. And there's no stopping signals at his side. So that makes sense. Come on, buddy. You're burning daylight here. <laughs> Hello, my friend. Fuel train friend. Yeah, they've got some interesting concepts. So he's got like fuel, and then he's got like crude oil, and then he's got fuel again. Right, the lights are off. Let's go. Uh, power. How do I go? Off to Lille. Again. <laughs> I'm looking forward to hitting up the freight again. I've missed freight. I might do some mail soon as well. I've not done mail in a while. And the mail is actually really fun. Also... The loading and unloading. Especially when you get warehouses where there are specific sidings that you sort of have to reverse into. It's pretty cool. It's a neat little mechanic. That should be the case for all freight trains. Um, because you don't want to load and unload stuff on a sort of through fare that other trains need to use to go through. They should be parked up in sidings for loading or unloading. Okay, so we are... Approaching a road section. I wonder if at some point, if you don't sound, there's an Alfa Romeo there. 
uh, at some point if you don't sound the horn do some of the AI cars uh, reason you ignore the horn sign no I didn't <laughs> and why did you only tell me that as the rest of the train was going through the thing okay so that definitely needs a bit of work because I was definitely sounding the horn <laughs> Unless I was I pushing X? I think I was. Uh, Monsieur DeVos has leveled up. Good man. And he likes his 68 passengers to Dortmund, Maine, earning. Good man. But you've now to go to Cologne. You head down to Cologne, buddy. And then you head back up. That is the plan. I wonder as well if they've added the fact that. Uh, AI drivers can have one of the stations they've already been into added to a route because uh, if you're doing something if you want to do something like a loop where the train ends at the station it started at you can't do that yet because it already says that you know it's like this station has already been selected why would you want to come back here because trains often do that. They travel on a route and then they turn around. Uh, oh, wait. You have changed your tune there, game. So previously, this took me... This let me bypass the San Quentin Sawmill. It took me down here on the bypass. Okay, so Q. I want to head to the left. Don't want to go in there. That's stupid. Yeah, this is a faster way. <laughs> we should have done the test again. Enter there at 120 and see if we can get to the other side before we're getting fined. <laughs> but if we're, eight, if we're at St. Quentin Sawmill, then that means uh, we're pretty much almost at uh, St. Quentin Main, which is not far from here, I think. All is looking well, though. Is it? Is all looking well? Looks pretty good. No trains or anything. And uh, we're gonna get a speed limit drop to 110. There it is. There. There's an animal near the tracks. Go hold the nice late 110. Now we'll play chicken with Bambi here. Where are you, my friend? You are actually on the tracks. I'm gonna have to sorry, disturb your day. And you're gonna have to move. Right, am I near five next? Yeah, so four, three, two, one, and three. There we go. You've been fined. I ignored the horn sign. Yes, I did. I admit that was my fault that time. Use horn. Okay. I'm literally holding it down. <laughs> You've been fined. Reason. You ignored the horn sign. <laughs> awesome. Yeah, I, that needs a bit of work. Oh crap, there's a lot of stuff going on here. Uh, slow down. Yeah, bypass the warehouse. Slow down A. How about windmill? Love a windmill. Hey. It's weird, there's like no windmill assets for Transport Fever 2. There are more ones for Transport Fever 1. Ones that I actually pour it over using the mod porter. And they still look really good. <laughs> it looks like it could be an asset for Transport Fever 2. You can't tell the difference. Can't even tell it's a Transport Fever 1 asset. Right, let's head round here. And let's get into the station. It looks like we are going to jump back into the cab because we are going to be turning left. 
Not yet, though. So we pass this diamond on the right. Then we pass this diamond on the right. And then we go left. Perfect. And then we are into Leo Main. And it wants us to stay on the right. I'm going to drop the power now as we come in. There we go. To 50. There's the 50. 50 is coming up. I'm pretty sure we've got lots of time, right? Company, my train. One hour. Jesus. So, at 13, at 15.30, we'll have lost all our money for the passengers from Luxembourg. Why are you red? Why are you red? I asked you for permission to enter. No, I didn't. I did not ask you for permission to enter. I asked permission to enter the wrong station. You know why? Because... Crap. We were still in range of St. Quentin, Maine, and I'm pretty sure I asked St. Quentin, Maine for permission to enter instead of Leo. I think that's what I did. Uh, I'm just having like sort of weird flashbacks there. Uh, so where does Leo mean? All right, four. Oh, we're definitely not gonna make it now. That was my bad, that was totally my bad. Yeah, I asked whoever it was. It's gone now. It normally comes up at the top of the screen. Alright, blocking signal. Don't give a crap about that. Let's go. Come on. Come on. Get out of the station. <laughs> right. Right there. I was, I was basically there. Right. Uh, three, two. There's the entrance. One back. Three passenger boarding. Get rid of that. Get rid of the brake. Let's go have a look for my platform uh, so we can stay on the right. All right, I've got 29 minutes to get everyone there. That was my bad. I definitely asked for permission to enter the wrong station previously. Again, this is another station that says you can go in at 80 kilometers per hour, so I will take it. I think we're still going to make it though. Right, pop that on V. There we go. 15 minutes to spare. <laughs> Delivery complete. You gained 3,339. So, yep, yeah, you get a lot more experience uh, for the further on stations. V, a closed doors. Uh, get rid of the brake. Leave the handbrake on. And we're good to go. So... There we go. That's that's done it for passengers for a while. I will keep this train if we want to do more passengers later. At least we'll have this train to play around with. I'll jump in another locomotive and we shall do freight uh, for the next episode. There are a few things around here. Uh, what have we got? Is there a few things around here? You said that as though you knew. Maybe get some iron ore and take it to a smeltery. There's a smeltery right there. And then take the produce, which is like iron bars, to wheel factory. No, 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 no. You need to take the iron bars to the steel mill. That also needs coal. So what we could do is go from here, go down here, we'll head down here, we'll change up the train, uh, we'll grab, we could go to this Kali smeltery as well. Is there coal near there? No, but there is London Steel Mill. Okay. Where's the nearest coal? Yeah, the nearest coal is down there. So what we'll do is, we'll go down here, pick up some iron, right? We'll then take it back up to the Kali smeltery. We'll then go down and get coal, 
from Amion Coal Mine, we shall take coal up to London Steel Mill. We'll go to the pump jack. We'll take that back to Amion Refinery. And then we can take the smelted iron back up to there. And that will actually give us some stuff. And then we need to go to the factory. Where is the factory? There. Except that. What does it produce though? Don't know. But it's a plan. That's at least a plan. So yeah, we'll leave it there for that episode. Wait. No, we won't. One of my drivers leveled up. Ah, Monsieur DeVos, the legend. Uh, you are really close to level up, but I, I don't have anything for you to do, unfortunately. Uh, right. What I have realized that this max intermediate points, this perk affects the maximum number of intermediate points allowed when setting up a passenger route task for an employee. So we want to start pumping that into there. And getting that done uh, so yeah let's end the episode there so as always if you did watch this and you would like to leave a like comment or dislike please feel free to do so and if there is more you would like to see in the future then hit a subscribe button but i've been danny men this has been train life and i will catch us later